simple creative intuitive thinking. Okay. I I have written an article on this. I've written about this, and I basically think that if you have these three things intact, you can do almost anything in your life. Okay. In any avenue of life. Critical thinking, going deep. It's analyzing. We talked we talked about that before. If you, if you read something, you want to go beyond just surface understanding. You want to see what's happening between the lines, above the lines, around the lines, with, within the lines, right? You're judging, inferring, going beyond what is just said there, right? Going deeper. And that's, that's where the, the money is made. If you want to work in a career where you're going to make money, critical thinking is huge. Creative thinking. Half. Half. Do you see that? Half, half of all wages and salaries. $1.7 uh, trillion dollars per year. Half of all wages and salary uh, occur in the creative sector. Okay? How important is creativity? Creativity is problem solving. Right? It's synthesizing you, you, who you are, what you know, with the problem and coming up with something you new. You create a solution, a bridge. Yeah. Bridge the gap. Intuitive thinking, according to great achievers, it's what you need most. All these guys, Trump, Ben Franklin, Mohammed El Arian, Da Vinci, all these guys. I'll not get into more detail in a second. <coughs> intuition is huge. Okay? In colleges, many college uh, mission statements say intuition. But uh, they don't always teach it. What are they saying? What are successful, hyper, uber successful people saying about intuition? Uh, John Nisbet, who is a best selling author of Future Studies, he looks into the future. And, and see what trends are occurring. Very successful. Intuition becomes increasingly valuable in the new information society precisely because there is so much data. We're all equal in our infinite ignorance. Sure, you can do your homework, like Donald Trump says. Do your homework, but at a certain point, you have to go with your gut feeling. Mohammed El Arian, who is one of the head financiers in the world, used to manage Harvard's money, is now the uh, co C COO, I think, at PIMCO. He talks about using intuition in understanding markets and how markets work, you know, to make investments, right? Einstein, you ever hear that dude? Pretty smart, cerebral. He understood limitations, right? Limitations, understanding, asking questions. What are my limitations? What can I cannot do? What do I do not know? What do I need to know, right? The only real valuable thing is intuition. So that's, that's huge, that's huge. What now? Tips for career and life success. What does that dude say to you? Bond. James Bond. Ladies, stand in line. That's Mikey, my son. Doesn't he look like Mr. Successful? I was looking for a picture on success, and I said, that dude has got it. Of course, he's six, and he doesn't know what's going on, so that's why he's so kind. Isn't he cute? Yeah. I miss him. He'll be back. Him and his mom will be back in four weeks. To achieve, know your true self, be true to yourself. Intrinsic motivation, right? Better conceptual understanding. You want to understand better stuff, know, know what you are. Don't go for something that other people say that you should do or you think you should be doing. I don't care what it is. You know. richer, richer experience, more joy, satisfaction, happiness. Better understanding, more creative, improved problem solver. Ever since I've gotten into this field, I am so do so totally committed. The stuff that I'm learning and my ability to be creative and to learn and my enthusiasm all out, out the roof. Right? That's where you want to be. In any form, control inhibits that. Right? I heard one student say, I, I generally clean up my room, but one day, and I was thinking of cleaning my room, and my mom said, hey, clean up your room, and then I said, oh, no, I careful of those things. Control, in, in, in many forms, inhibits the above. Control inhibits intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation. Uh, Dr. Uh, Decci, Edward Decci, who wrote, why, why do we do, why we do what we do. Very important reading. Intrinsic motivation is almost spiritual. It is a vitality, dedication, transcendence. Man, that sounds good, huh? It is a state of flow when time collapses and disappears, when intensity of the process takes over, and the thrill is so great that one hates seeing it end. How about that? You like a job like that? 
Every day I get up and I do this. Saturday, you know, Monday through Sunday, he doesn't pull punches. Got failure? You're going to have failure. Failure happens. Learn how to benefit from failure. Don't try to avoid it. You really don't want to look for it. It's going to happen. Right? Failure, difficulty, challenges. If you learn how to ask the right questions, what can I learn from this? What can I gain from this? What strength can I get? Wisdom, insight, understanding, right? From those difficulties and trials and challenges. I've lost money. I've lost health. I've had cancer. I've gone bankrupt. What, what can I learn? What can I learn? Oh, this is painful. Ouch, ouch, ouch. But you're not going to go crying and end up in mommy's uh, apron strings, right? What can I learn? I, you know, i gotta, I got to be an adult. Grasp it. Figure it out. Um, failure, not an option, because it's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> most in seeking a false euphoria deny the existence of life's difficulties. You will learn more about patience, self-control, empathy, stress control, and compassion from one encounter with difficulty than from all your trips to Universal Studios, Six Flags, and Disneyland combined. So often we are so concerned with what makes us feel good that we forget what makes us great. Right? When I realized I had to overcome all my shortcomings, what did I do? I did the most scary thing in the world. Start, it started to get up in front of people. Oh, oh. And it sucks, and you're terrible, and you're miserable, but keep working at it, eventually it becomes better. If something is worth doing, it's worth doing it poorly and you can, until you can do it well, or really well, or amazing. And now people come up to me and say just that. That was amazing. In those words, right? Where before, I, I was scared to come out of my basement. Uh, take control of your education. What do you do? Well, here's some stuff. This is from Academically Adrift. Find teachers who are approachable with high standards. Find teachers, that, according to the Harvard Project Zero, clearly state course objective, clearly present material, link course content to course objective, provide students with examples of what is expected. All these things are critical, right? Find teachers who are uh, success-minded with success principles. They're open-minded. Napoleon Hill says, who wrote the, the book, uh, The Law of Success in 16 Lessons, open-minded is one of the key components of highly successful people. Teachers who are empowering, realistic, encouraging, real-world, goal-oriented, creative, pleasing personality who are tolerant. Start shutting your mind down, you're going to shut down your opportunity for greater achievement and success. Bottom line. Don't wait for educators, administrators, reformers, politicians to come up with one-size-fits-all plan. It's never going to work. You must learn to be 100% accountable. I mean, think about it. Is your education over in 16 years? I think not. Okay. And uh, there's some contact information down there. So, I want to thank you for coming out. I appreciate your time. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.